What up, YouTube? It's your boy Banks. And we back in the building, you feel me? It's True Talks. Because True Talks, all right? Let's get straight right into it. So you already know, last night was, you know, the All-Star, basically the All-Star weekend in one day. It was a jam-packed event. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to obviously run through quickly how I thought about a lot of the things. You know what I'm saying? But obviously the main event was the All-Star game. And as much as it was kind of like a blowout, basically, it still was really entertaining. A lot of skill was possessed. You know what I'm saying? You've seen Dame and Curry on the same team shooting from Egypt. There's no secret. That's what they do. You know what I'm saying? So, bruh. <laughs> You know how these threes get. You know what I'm saying? So basically, it was a lot of a lot of shooting, like all the All Star games always are. And to be honest, a lot of people like they don't like they like you know the dunks and the flashy stuff. I honestly like, bro. We've seen how many dunks, we've seen how many get up and all that type of stuff. Like we've seen it all the time. It was probably more electrifying back then when they were throwing alleys, they were throwing off the backboard Vince Carter dunks. Like those dunks were more so like it was elite. But when you get older. You know what I'm saying? And, and and just appreciating skill to its finest. I obviously I like it being this way where it's like mans are doing sidestep threes, step back threes. You seen Jalen Brown doing a post fade, turn around Kobe left corner or right corner three. You know what I'm saying? Like the just the arsenal is just I, I love it, man. I love it. At the end of the day, obviously, you know, you would like to see more defense. I think that there this format is a great format. Obviously, we've seen it last year with a lot of defense. But I think there would be more defense, you know, based if there wasn't no, you know, coronavirus and the COVID, obviously, short turnaround season. They were, you know, they thought for this season it was going to be no all-star game. It was just going to be bare rest. So, obviously, a lot of those things, those factors play a part in just the fact that they didn't play defense more than that what they would have actually played. But you already know, we'll, we'll dive into all of that. Let's go into the context because I give it that context. Let's go straight right into it, boy. So you already know, like I said, we'll start off with uh, you know, um, you know, the earlier events, the the they had the skills, you know, the skills competition. This I just showed you that this game is has changed drastically. This game is full of so much skill, so much potent skill. It's a whole new era. You can't think of the game with your old conditioned mind and how you used to normally think of stuff, right? You can't think of the game in that factor. You can't think of the game with that kind of mindset because the game has changed. Like, you have big men that can run a skills competition and win it. And it's been like that for the past couple of years. And they're, like, neck and neck with Chris Paul, neck and neck with elite guards with elite skills. Even the passing, sometimes their passes are better than the guards. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to – it's a whole different realm and a whole different, you know, uh, echelon that these bigs actually are on in terms of skill, right? So we look at it. Sabonis won that, you know, it was obviously it was good. You know, those things kind of like it's always fun to see, right? It's kind of like a knockout within the skills challenge competition. So that was good to see, obviously. And then, you know, we get to the, for me, my main event is always a three-point shootout. It's not even a dunk contest no more, especially without Aaron Gordon or Levine or whatever. Like the dunk off, I like the dunk off, but like it's, it's, it's tough now when a lot of the things are kind of like how many different dunks can you do? The creativity, like everyone's done all the dunks under the sun. So now it's like the way you even scale, like the fact that Cassius Stanley could do, you know, the Vince Carter dunk, the Vince Carter dunk where he got the bounce pass from T-Mac and did the through the legs. The reason why people were so wild about it was because it wasn't just a regular bounce. Like T-Mac did a bad pass. He bounced it hella high and Vince Carter going up, took the ball that's higher than him, caught it, brought it down through the legs and then dunked it. Most mans don't do that. Most mans catch it from low or they go low and then dunk it. So the fact that he's going up and caught it from high, he caught it from like almost his chest and then brought it down and through the legs. That's what made it so spectacular, obviously, right? So, and the difficulty. And obviously with his showmanship and his swag. But then the fact that now Cassius Stanley does the bounce dunk, he does the same thing. So he, he didn't catch it from low. Most mans, you've seen even when OB Toppin did that bounce, like they catch it low. Obviously it's still difficult. But it's not as hard as when you catch it high. You have to catch it high, bring it down, and then go back up. That's multiple. That's three. Three mo motions. Up, down, up. You know what I'm saying? That's that's difficult, especially in Duncan. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that he did a bounce pass, hella high. The ball was at the mesh. He caught it, put it down. You know what I'm saying? 
reversed through the legs and did it with the left hand. That is something that, to me, is obviously a 50, and I think he got robbed. And even if it's not a 50, because I know last year kind of spoiled the 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 rating system in terms of these play in terms of these um these uh, uh um judges right because you don't want to give every if you give that first dunk a 10 then everything and that's the first dunk dunks are only going to get better you're going to have to give so many 10s and it's like you're going to get to that tiebreaker and all that type of stuff right so i get them i didn't even think that even if they didn't want to do a 50 okay but if you got a 48 the man wouldn't be discouraged in his next dunk you know what i'm saying like that's an elite dunk his that was the best dunk in that first round and they gave it a 40 four like now so that was to me like i didn't like it and i already knew off the jump that it was going to be tougher for him because it's a guy who he's not even he's in the he's in the bubble all the first the, you gotta understand you know what i'm saying i'm gonna go to three point later because that's my main event but you, you gotta understand that the the dunk off a lot of the before especially back then these are older heads back then and the older heads and the dunk dunk um champions were actually the judges the older heads normally look at it especially even me being in that era, I look at it as like, yo, it used to be the dunk off was a main event because you had the stars or like elite up and coming young stars. Like let's like Tatum right now. You know what I mean? Tatum was like, let's say like a team act or whatever the case was. Like you have young, young guy. Obviously, you know, they're younger too, like rookie or whatever, but they're not like, or let me reverse that. You'll have like the John Morants, the Zions, like even though they're rookies, they're spectacular all-star caliber rookies like when you had the Blake Griffin all that type of stuff like you had those guys doing the dunk off Baron Davis like you had a plethora of names you know what I'm saying doing the dunk off guys who are in the sophomore games you know are in the dunk off now it's to the point where there's guys who are just coming for the dunk off like and it wasn't like that before there is the guys who are dunking were in multiple events that you'll actually watch the, the sophomore game and you'll see a like a, a preview like a, you'll have bunnies or show bunnies or doing elite dunk in the sophomore game and you're like or, you know, and you're like, oh, my God, I can't wait for tomorrow type of thing. Because these guys are in order in the All-Star game as well, too. Like, you know what I mean? It's 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 the stars that are dunking. So now that's already been diluted and it's been like the lower tier guys. That's why you see Zach Levine not even want to do a dunk. He doesn't want to be a guy labeled as a dunk off guy. Back then, it didn't matter because you have Dwight Howard. You have Nate Robinson. You have these guys. You know what I mean? Obviously, Nate Robinson wasn't an All-Star, but he wasn't no scrub. Right? You have actually rotational proper guys that are doing the dunk off so now you're gonna tell me that we're gonna come give the champion to a guy who was in the g league bubble and they just called him up for the dunk off they're gonna obviously they're gonna rate him different he's gonna have to wow over the top wow them for him to win the champion you know what i'm saying so i asked that i already know that's their mindset obviously no one's gonna say that but i already know i already know these are dunk champions josh smith dominique wilkins like these guys are already cheese that they're seeing no name brands in the dunk off you know what i'm saying so, but so like, and now you want a guy who was literally in the bubble. Like, you gotta understand, like, before he was in the bubble, he wasn't even in the league. He obviously is in the league, but he's in the bubble. And call him up, come through. And he's gonna, yeah. Uh, I knew they weren't gonna allow that. Or obviously, it's not like they could make him not win. They could, but he has to wow them. So the fact that he's doing dunks that were like not over, over the top, that was definitely gonna, you know, affect him. So, that one, you know, Anthony Simons won. Obviously, he still had a little bit of his own creativity. Obi Toppin, that one dunk he did with his own creativity. Other dunk he did through the legs from, like, almost free throw. Zach Levine been done that. But the fact that we're getting accustomed to that type of dunk, like, that dunk is even a reckless dunk. Through the legs, almost free throw. Man, it used to just be, it used to be a big thing just to dunk from almost free throw. Man, are doing through the legs free throw, and we're like, oh, my God, we've seen that before. Like, just take that in. That's how you, just, just the whole theme of this whole, of this whole, all-Star Weekend, and just every day that I try to, uh, uh, you know, try to articulate to people and try to get people to think about is that this league is a different league. The skill, we're getting accustomed to the skill, and we're taking it for granted. That's what I want to always just, you know, portray and just, you know, beat the dead horse. That's what I want to tell people. You know, I want to get that in your brains. Like, this league is complete, like, it's reckless. Like, you know, we don't take it in how elite this league is skill-wise of what we're seeing right now. And every little factor, skills challenge, dunk off, all of these little things that you see as happening, like there's always something to take from it that you're like, yo, this is crazy. A man's doing a through the legs free throw line dunk, and we're like, yo, that's not original. We seen that. We're accustomed to that. Like, man's were wild when man's were hella a foot in front of the free throw line with Dr. J and them. You know what I'm saying? And man's were hella, oh my God, he dunked from free throw line. Like that, bro. And now man's are doing through the legs.
alley through the legs. Like, bruh. And we're like, nah, that's weak. <laughs> that's crazy. But anyways, you know, the dunk off, uh, they have to do, I don't know if they have to do fully something, but I just, I need it to where the stars are like, maybe give a, a extra bonus. I don't know what it is, man. Like the stars like need to come back to do this dunk off because last year's dunk off was a great dunk off with Aaron Gordon and, and um, DSJ. So, you know, some people are saying the dunk off should just be done. I don't think it should be fully done because this is, you know, is legendary. It's always a, t a time for someone to make their name for themselves, but they need to do some type of adjustment, some type of adjustment or some type of incentive or format change or something like they did with the all-star game. You got to do it with a dunk off too, or maybe put six men. I don't know what they got to do, man, but they got to create something. So anyways, we move past that. I don't want to stay too much on that, but the three point shootout and this correlates with the all-star game because Steph, obviously, they didn't have the biggest names in there. And Steph went to work, obviously. And it, it was entertaining. It always comes down to the game winner. Like, it's the, the three-point shootout has been one of the most entertaining events all the time. For me, it has been my main event for a while. So, you know, the fact that it was one shot away from Conley. Conley put the pressure on Steph's neck. And we wanted to see the bright lights. Even though, you know what I mean, the pom poms weren't fully sweaty. He still came through. But you've seen the difference of around one, he's snapping 30 plus. And then the next round, there's makes that he normally would make. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Because it's pressure, you know what I'm saying? But he still came through, got the game winner, you know what I'm saying? Which I rate at the end of the day. But this is what translates to the All Star game. And we'll segue naturally from this because I forgot. When I made my predictions about what team was going to win. One, I didn't know Embiid was going to be out. And two, I forgot. And that's my fault. I forgot that <laughs> Steph and these guys are in the three point shootout. And they're playing it in the same day. That's a warm up. This man got two rounds, two rounds of chucking. So now, and then just uh, commercial break. Now we start the all-star game. I'm already warm. Like this is supreme warm. Like, you know what I mean? That's why the man's hidden. He's just hidden. That's why for me, Dame shooting from deep was more like his, he didn't really have full, full warm up like the way Steph is. Steph splashing off. We already know he does that, but you give Steph already the greatest shooter of all time. You give that guy two rounds and a three point shootout the, before the game. Bruh, I forgot about it. That's a huge factor. Not to mention, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying with the All-Star game. Now Embiid, obviously, due to contract tracing, I think when he went to the barbershop or whatever, him and Simmons, and then I guess their barber or whoever, someone in there uh, tested positive. So now contract tra uh, con uh, tack tracing. Now he can't play. They both can't play, and they got to sit out. And you can't replace them because it's hella late. You know what I'm saying? So Embiid, the reason why Embiid, Simmons, whatever, right? Like, you know what I mean? But Embiid was, is a big hit because, one, he's the starting center. And, two, Giannis now, who won the MVP, he had 36 points, 16 for 16, no miss, all dunks. Basically, dunk, 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 layup three. Dunk, 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 layup wild three. <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he was doing, right? So, basically, when you look at it, and it's like, bruh, <laughs> come on now. There's no Embiid. If Embiid was actually there, even if he doesn't play full defense, you're not just going up doing easy dunks with Embiid 7-2 standing there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have to do some type of contact layup or it's not the same. And that alone, and then not to mention you add Embiid now doing the Giannis dunks and no one's contesting the 7-2 layup and draw foul or whatever he's doing, right? And it's like you offset what Giannis is doing. So, like, it would be a close game automatically. So this game was more so a blowout. Not Yes, obviously, they played weaker defense, and one team took it more seriously earlier on because I did see them try and play defense. I seen Kyrie was trying to get steals. He was trying to strap full court press and all that type of stuff, and they were playing defense, and it looked like, oh, they might make a comeback, but then Dane was just hot. These men step back three. Paul George, <clears throat> smooth step back, side step three. Like, you know, just hitting three. So that 24 points at the end was just easily, and they just got it in two seconds. You know what I'm saying? But it was the fact that the main... X factor and the reason why it wasn't a close game was literally no Embiid and Giannis's paint domination. That wouldn't have happened, and that was a difference maker. Obviously, Steph and KD were X factor. Uh, Steph and sorry, Dame were X factors and like supreme X factors. What thirty two points, thirty uh, thirty something points, whatever it was, and you know it's like elite threes, limitless threes. Like I, you gotta understand, like people like the fact that Dame is taking, he's using the half court line. As his three point line, <laughs> like, do you? I don't think man's actually understand, and not just he's shooting from there. It looks like a jump shot. Man's are doing pull up threes, sidestep threes, lane in threes, like 
fade threes, and then 2K wants to patch that and say it's unrealistic, and look what you're seeing. And I try to tell people, you don't see how many times you see contact dunks. Anyways, that's I digress. How many times you see contact dunks in a game? It's once in a blue moon. You see these type of threes on an everyday basis. And then that gets pat. Anyways, that's my fault. I digress. But what I'm saying is at the end of the day, like, that ability, like, to shoot that from that deep, like, what these guys are doing, like, it's remarkable. It's actually out of this world. Like, I don't think people actually take in how difficult, and not just to do it, to do it effortlessly, effortlessly, like, both Dame and, and Steph. And then not only that, they're doing it in one or two tries. So it's not like, you know, back then when Manchester shoot from half court, it's like, ah, give me, I can, I can make one out of five. I can make one out of 10. And then when you make it, it's like, I'm elite. You know what I mean? Like, bro, these men are doing it one take, splash, one for two. Like, Dame shoots like 60 plus percent from like, what is it? From like the, like the most deepest range. Logo shots. He's like, like, bro, it's actually reckless. And these men, like, <laughs> half court, like, I, bro, man, so, and it's not even like, it, it's splashy if you ask me. Like, it's ripping the mesh. Like, yeah, bro, I don't, it, people just, if they see it and it, 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 they take it for granted, the ability that this league possesses, like, it's remarkable, man. It's out of this world. Like, it's, it's amazing. Like, when you actually just take it in and actually, if you try to just do it yourself, mans are doing granny shit. You know how many times mans, like, it's, it's like once in, like, 50 tries, a fan makes a half-court shot in how many games? These guys are coming down one take, just pulling it, like, and it's regular. And the bear fans that shoot an air ball clap <sighs> over the bat, like, mans are whipping it one hand. Like, mans are, like, throwing out their shoulder just to make it from half. Like, the three-point line is already deep. Now you got the half court. Like, mans, uh, mans don't take it in. And then not to mention, obviously, at the end of the game, you know, Dame. And this is why, again, it always comes down to comparing this because I already see media, um, everyone on media and fans, they're always going to always find a way to compare who versus who versus who and at me and just, you know, DM or whatever the case is. And I just see people in the comments, not this comments, but just on Twitter in general and IG under under the post and other people's posts and stuff like that. And Bleacher Report and the NBA pages and all that type of stuff. You see, oh, my God, Curry greater than a staff. Curry did it in one try, did it this and that and that and that. I'm like, yo, bruh. I always try to tell you, Dame's clutch ability, he's on a tear where, like, Kyrie and those guys live. Obviously, Dame in regular season, no one's even on that tear. You know what I'm saying? But you got to understand, look at the last shot. It's for game. Steph takes it first. What happens? Pfft. Rebound, you know, the sound. <laughs> and then Dame comes one try from even further. What happens? Bucket. Shoulder watch. That's the difference. That's why I try to tell you. That's the dip. That's when from your superstar. That's what is always more potent. That's what's always more elite. Is the guy who has the supreme clutch clutch ability. He's he's always in a situation where he's always he's like, bruh, y'all are str I'm gonna take over. I'm gonna put the team on my shoulder. And they get more dubs out of that. And they need less around them. Now, step, people are now, this is what happens. They don't understand situations. If you put Dame in Steph's situation, he's getting the same three rings, and I promise you he's getting finals MVP. KD might not even go there because he's not losing a 3-1 lead with Dame with that clutch ability. He's not having Caleb and Tristan Thompson switch on him, and it's not a bucket. Like, are you serious? Dame gets buckets on his primary defenders in the clutch with no screen, step back three, like you say, all the time. You know what I'm saying? Dame is in a situation where he doesn't even have an all-star. We know, obviously, CJ is basically an all-star. But on paper, he doesn't have an all-star. He doesn't have a Draymond who's an elite defender who's going to play make where he doesn't have to ball handle. He, he can avoid getting trapped. Steph is not just ball handling. But Steph don't even need a... Steph don't even... Steph could go 15 possessions without even bringing up the ball one time. And basically play shooting guard and come, on, come off screens. Get it? Ah, not their pass. Relocate. And Draymond's going to facilitate. Dame don't have that. Who's facilitating? Dame actually had to improve his facilitating because he was normally just a scorer coming in. Had to improve his facilitating. Now Dame comes up, and this is why Dame even shot from deep. It wasn't because of Steph or whatever. Dame always could shoot from deep, but he was hesitant because, again, you know, coming in, it's like, is a coach really going to allow that? 
So he didn't really shoot from deep. He shot it from deep in situations, obviously, that required it. But now he's like, yo, I'm getting double teamed on these pick and rolls. So you know what? If I just come up from deep and shoot before I even get to the three-point line, I could as I could avoid the double team. He's doing it as a as a tactic, as a weapon, as an adjustment. That's what he did. And if he if you heard him say it, he's even said it before. That's how that's the reason why he shot started shooting from deep and actually practiced it. And, and mastered it because he's like, yo, I'm getting trapped in these pick and rolls. I'm playing New Orleans. They're double teaming me, like all that type of stuff. Even without the pick and roll, they're coming in double teaming me because it's just me. You have Aminu, who's not a shooter. You have Harkless, who's not a shooter. And it's only CJ. They stay on CJ. And then what? Let the big and let, you know what I mean? Like, come on now. Remember, he didn't have Melo. He didn't have none of those guys. It's just him and CJ and role players. So in the playoffs, I could just double team that guy. And it's funny, when Steph's in that same situation, y'all say he didn't have Clay, he didn't have this, he didn't have that. He didn't have KD. Every time Steph is in a Dame situation, he's not winning. So what does that tell you? You can't use Steph's rings as a reason to discredit Dame and say, oh, Steph's better than Dame. Like, no, you can't. It's situational. You have to understand, winning is situational. Assess the ability and how they move, and then now be able to articulate and be able to compartmentalize the situations and how this guy would move in this situation based off of if you gave him this piece and this piece and this piece. That's what you understand. If someone who's always clutch, they're always going to be the better player than someone who, who isn't as clutch. If you actually look at it, because situationally, you know what I'm saying, you'll see that, okay, you know what, you put him here, this, this, and that. But in that same situation in the clutch, what is that guy going to do when it matters? And I digress, but basically, you know what I mean? He's going to put buckets on a platter. That's what Dame is going to do. Like, you un people don't under actually understand that. So now now Dame is actually, if you watch um, um, Trailblazer games, Dame is actually getting double teamed from half. From half. And he doesn't have a Draymond to play make from that. He's getting double teamed from half. If you go look at the bubble, they double teamed Dame from half. From half. <laughs> That's what they did. So people are now looking at his playoffs and looking at, oh, my God, maybe he did bad in this percentage, bad in this situation. When he faced teams who didn't double them, like OKC, Cook. When he faced, you know, in those situations, the one times in the conference finals, he's doubled the whole game. And he had a fractured ribs when Looney landed on him. So you, I like, there's so many things that people don't, that's why Dame, when Dame is unclutched or he doesn't perform, I don't even look into it like, oh, my God, he's Fugazi. I'm watching him get double teamed nonstop. And for point guards getting double teamed, is harder than like Katie getting double teamed because Katie don't bring up the ball. Katie can just go to a spot, you give it to him, and even if you double team him, it takes one dribble pull. As opposed to a point guard bringing up the ball, double team from half, you can. You, he's not just gonna force his way through the double split and then and go to the pain and like no, that's like even hard and get double teams the same thing. Like on the perimeter that far, you get double team, they force it out your hands and that and then it doesn't come back to you because now it's three on two now. Then you can you know what I mean. Force that guy in the corner, Harkless, to shoot, all that type of stuff. So, anyways, I digress. This wasn't about that. You know what I'm saying? But I heard a lot of, you know, Steph, Dame, and comparisons, and all, a lot of that type of stuff. But, anyways, we move past that. Basically, the All-Star game, you know, when you look at it, I don't think it was that bad of a game, like how people maybe think it was a blow or whatever. I think it was very entertaining, especially given the circumstances, given, like, the COVID, given the contract tr uh, tracing, given the fact that it's a pandemic anyways. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that it was actually a pretty good event for what, you know, the circumstances actually were. And, you know, the fact that they were given to HBCUs and, you know, raising money, donating and highlighting even during the event. A lot of it, it was great, man. It was great to see. This is something they should have been doing in terms of the HBCUs. But again, remember, there's as much as the negative of a pandemic, how negative it was and stuff like that. There were some positives moving forward that you could take away from it as well, too. Right. So. That's something that, you know, I, I did like. And just the event in general. Obviously, LeBron didn't play that much. I don't blame him because it's a quick turnaround. The fact that he actually was professional and showed up, you know, because he's the face of the NBA and all that type of stuff. Like, you got to give credits to him, even though he played 13 minutes. I didn't expect him to play that much as well, too, which probably goes why he was choosing Luka and Giannis to ball handle because he's not going to be there as much, right? So that's probably the thinking behind LeBron. But me choosing Team Durant, I think that I didn't expect Booker to be out. And I didn't expect uh, um, Embiid to be out, right? But I think even with Booker out, if Embiid was there, like you've seen Bill go to work, you've seen multiple players. Kawhi play like garbage, but he wasn't trying, obviously. Uh, um, you've seen multiple people, Bill, you know, Tatum did a one-two hard and was actually catching and shooting. 
Like I was, I was, I was happy for that. You know what I'm saying? You seen Kyrie go to work, like you seen Bear Mans get buckets, right? So, you know, it just came down to literally even with Steph and Dame going, going, going to work. There's guys who canceled that out on the perimeter, on the perimeter side for the for the team Durant. The main difference was Giannis. That 36 points, even if it, it became 20, it would be a whole different game because you minus is 20 and you add 20 to MB. You know what I'm saying? Or you minus 16 of his points. And even if MB only scored 10 points, that's it's gonna be a different game than now. The defense is gonna matter. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. It's gonna be a complete different momentum, complete different game. Cause Giannis is not just going up like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I did a, I did like it for given the situation it was. Y'all let me know what y'all thought, your biggest takeaways, the things that you know you liked from it, you know, uh, uh who you didn't like, all that type of stuff. And again, like I remember I told y'all Donovan Mitchell, like he struggled. He, he did redeem himself later on and started hitting threes. But again, that's why you're the last pick when every all-star game you're struggling. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, he did redeem himself later on. But, you, you know, again, it comes down to ability. That's what it comes down to. So I really, I honestly, I like the threes, man. I can't lie to you guys. I like the threes. I like the ability. I like the arsenal. I like watching men do moves, you know, sidesteps and look smooth with it. And, you know, those are to me more fascinated than just a dunk. I Dunkin is like we seen it all back then, yeah. But now we have seen it all. The Arsenal is actually more fat. The Euros, the you know, you know, escape dribbles, all that type of stuff. In and out three, the the Jalen fade in the corner. Like, bro, like all of that is is uh the Dame Steph half court threes. Like that's more entertaining and more wild than a man going and punching who's already six 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 seven. You have bounce. It's not hard for you to dunk. It's not hard. Get in a bucket though, that's hard. So, you know, I always appreciate that, and I like the way it's going. I do. A lot of people won't say that, and they do play more defense. I like this format. This year kind of was like, and it wasn't like they didn't play defense at all because I'm watching, like, Chris Paul get cookies. I'm, they did play defense. So, obviously, to start, they didn't. They never really do. But now I like it where you can see spurts, more spurts of or dosages of defense within every quarter because, remember, you have to win every quarter. So the format is uh, is basically enticing and it's an incentive to def to defense and more, you know, um energy and more actual just competitiveness in general because again, each quarter you win, you win, you win. So within a quarter it's a game within a game. It's four games within a game and then a whole game, right? And the more you keep it closer, the less amount of buckets you have to score. You know, you get penalized the target score. That's what you see. If you actually look at it, every quarter was close. There's only one quarter that they won by like 10, which was the second quarter. But every quarter was like a, a five-point window. But then when it added up, it now became a 20-point lead, right? So then now they had to double amount score. That's a score to 24, and Team Durant had to score 20-plus 20 or 21-plus after that too. So now it's like, oh, my God. And then that even makes it more challenging. There's no clock. There's no nothing. Can you outscore us? You have to lock up. If you, if you really want to win, and get to that target score first, they have less points they have to score. So you have to actually double lock up and score to, to uh, you know, erase the, the the difference or the deficit. So I love the format, man. I don't think they should change it at all. I don't think they should change it at all and keep it like this. And, you know, I think that when it's a more regular year, more regular season, you know, the all-star break isn't like, oh, my God, ooh, saw we can't, you know, we're hella fatigued and all that type of stuff. You'll start seeing more defense. And you'll start seeing back to what we saw from last year, right? So, and even if Embiid was there, I think it would have been a complete different game. So, you know, I appreciate y'all. You already know. Share, like, and subscribe. We out here. There's no doubt here. There's no drought here. I did like the game, man. Obviously, not as intense as it could have been. But it wasn't. It, I give it, like, maybe. I give it, I honestly, I give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. 7, 7.5. Especially from the ability we saw in and the wow and then, like, the things that happened within it, like that Dame and Steph sequence, alleys to CP3, Steph catch one, Dame catch one, you get an alley, you get an alley, you get an alley. <laughs> On the day Oprah is even interviewing, it's funny. But anyways, yeah, you know, I, I, I liked it. I liked it, man. I liked it. I think it was entertaining, man. So I appreciate y'all. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. You already know. We out here. There's no doubt here. There's no drought here. You feel me? I appreciate y'all, man. We got a lot to talk about. We got, you know, Blake Griffin got traded to the Nets. There's a lot of things to talk about even before the first round of games when they resume on Wednesday. So I appreciate y'all. You, you feel me? Gotta love it. And I'm out, man.